Welcome back to Primetime News. Special welcome to the folks watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Up first this evening, private sector groups have presented their list of suggestions as an opposition-led crime solution talk with government and sector groups began on Tuesday. The groups gave opening statements ahead of private discussions at the Jamaica Conference Center. After much debate about the objective and appropriateness of the opposition hosting a stakeholders' crime summit, the meeting started on Tuesday with the Attorney General Marlene Malahu Fort representing the government, several opposition members, and representatives of over 30 private sector groups. Private sector organization president Howard Mitchell presented his organization's suggestions, but not before the parliamentary representative spoke. The opposition insists that it called the meeting because the Andra holness led government has failed to do so despite the agreement in January. They argue that in the absence of the meeting, there was still no national agreement on a solution to crime. The Attorney General refuted that suggestion. It is true that some of the follow-up meetings desired are yet to be convened. Um, but government and opposition schedules have not been coinciding. But it is also true that the government has been regularly convening various other meetings where the opposition and other stakeholders have been present. All parties agreed that with crime, particularly murders, at its current level, urgent action is needed. Dr. Peter Phillips suggested that he doesn't believe enough is being done. Any solutions which we seek will have to extend, as I said earlier, beyond the simple facts of policing extending to our schools, extending to community-based and family-based interventions which the society will need to undertake. But while stating that efforts are being made and that the government is open to ideas, Mrs. Malahu Fort says there is one fundamental hurdle, a proverbial elephant in the room. But I think most unfortunately in our political context, there is distrust distrust and we have to start working on that in a more meaningful way. For the PSOJ president, that issue is front and foremost for the majority of the local private sector. They say their proposal is not for a security plan but for long-term strategies to build trust in those carrying out the plan. Our approach requires the admission by the political parties of the role that politics has played and still plays in the generation of crime and violence. And it requires the public disavowal by the political parties of the continuance of the linkages between politics and gangs and gunmen. The list also included policy change suggestions. It also requires a medium term commitment to unified policies which will not be changed when a minister changes or there is a new administration. They've also called for public inclusion on details of the restructuring of the police force and the justice system to show that everyone is equal before the law. Herman Green, TVJ News. In the meantime, former PNP President Portia Simpson-Miller has again asked those using her name and image in the current internal race to stop doing so with immediate effect. In a tweet, Mrs. Simpson-Miller said though she has already asked persons to stop, that request has been ignored, giving the false impression that she is supporting one candidate over another. In this week's edition of the Business Review, TVJ's Andrew Laidley zooms in on entrepreneurial initiatives to cash in on Jamaica's creative industries. Kingston has been designated as a UNESCO creative city of music. That's because of our rich culture and musical heritage. But how much of that have we really tapped into? Our team met up with a group of entrepreneurs here in Kingston at the Dance Hall Hostel to find out. Last year, we can say we brought 420 people into the community of Jacksontown. Creative director at the Dance Hall Hostel, Orville Hall. He says he expects to surpass that mark this year. He's created an entire business around teaching tourists how to dance to dance hall music. And it's all happening in this community, Jacksontown, St. Andrew. Each tourist pays 35 US dollars for a session lasting about 1 hour 15 minutes. At today's rate, that's about 4,700 Jamaican dollars per person. 
the dance hall hostel can accommodate up to 40 persons at a time. Mr. Hall highlights that he isn't the only one benefiting from the influx of tourists to the community. With dance hall hostel, one of the main things is that we help to make the community earn as well. So the um, carry around the road we sell our chicken and fries. Princess of the road we sell our ice cream. You know, um, Marjorie that does our food thing. They are a part of what happens in the community. You know, the, the, the guests are able to walk around the road and shop um, at the, the local store around the road, or they can go across the road to the dance hall deli. And, and get them like a sandwich or them like a food, so the community benefit. And it's not just Kingston. Mr. Hall recently hosted a dance camp in Montego Bay, St. James, luring 34 visitors from 16 different countries who had come to the parish for Reggae Sumfest. This will be the second year that we have now gone into the western end, which is Montego Bay, where we collaborate with Reggae Sumfest to have people get the Sumfest experience. Because when people come to Kingston, they get the Kingston experience, but we say the Sumfest experience would be taking it at, at, at a different level. With regards to the accommodation side of the business, a room at the dance hall hostel can go for as low as 45 US dollars. Managing director at the hostel, Sylvester Gordon, says it's even more affordable when his clients arrive in groups. But you know, most of my guests, they, they, they come in groups, so I can keep them up to like four to eight person in a room. So that must easier for me, and the price more easier for, for deal with. But we also have private room as well. And then we have the dance studio and the, um, the dance class, what we offer here. As for the visitors themselves. Oh, it's, it's been a ton of fun. It's been um, a safe way to come to Jamaica and experience all of the dance instruction and feel like you have like a solid home base. My experience has been really good. This is my third time here. Uh, it's just relaxing and welcoming. A lot of dancers come through here and just getting to hang out with people from the area and it just feels like you're at home. And so to really know how to do dance hall properly, you have to go to the parties and feel the vibe and see how everyone um, interprets dance hall in their own way. It's been good. It's not my first time. It's always nice here. Andrew Laidley, TVJ News. Amid's plans to revive downtown Kingston as a major commercial center, a growing concern that may hamper that push, a shortage of parking spaces. It's an issue right across the corporate area, and as TVJ's Kirk Wright now explains, it seems to be getting worse. Try finding legitimate parking in Kingston City, and you could end up a frustrated motorist. The parking is not ad adequate for um, the customers in this metropolitan area. It is a challenge, because um, especially if I have to go on the road during the days, during the week, it's very difficult to find parking. Half a tree and downtown, I prefer to charter a taxi to take me if I have to do business in those areas during the week. Depending on the time of day, available parking often means squeezing into a tight space, a skill, some motorists lack even those driving small cars. We are aware that a lot of traffic congestion, and some of it would, would come from the people moving around trying to find the parking spaces. These yellow lines mean no parking, and they are all over the city. On top of that, there are clear no parking signs and personalized signs indicating parking for different institutions. Lenworth Kelly, an engineer, says the lack of parking is serious, but not yet critical. We are certainly headed there. Motorists disobey warnings and park illegally almost daily. But there's a price to pay, and today, this man will have to dig deep in his pocket to get back his car. On a typical day, records operated by the Kingston and San Angelo Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, will tow approximately 40 cars in total. The corporation owns two of them, which constantly rove the city looking for offenders. There is a culture for people to, and a, a mode of behavior developed over the years of some motorists just prefer to park anywhere along the, 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 along the street. And they may figure that they're just going to do something short and they park somewhere along the roadway. That is something that we have to change. 
But people doing business in the city want safe and convenient parking, the one thing most businesses lack. For example, courts, courts there. And so, for example, you come to pick up a piece of furniture. You're going to be obstructing traffic for some time. So they really need to work on the parking and, and renovating of this, the whole area. Geraldine Smith double parked recently when she went to an ABM on Lower King Street. The parking is way over on the courthouse side and um, you have to drive all the way upstairs and then walk all the way back down here. If you're coming to get cash, you're going to have to walk all the way back up there with that. I don't think that is safe. These are common scenes on King and Orange Streets, vehicles loading up for delivery. But that adds to the congestion downtown. The hassle in finding legal parking is more difficult in New Kingston. The KSA MC operates several parking lots in New Kingston, which are usually full. After five, when the lot officially closes, there are different and unauthorized arrangements. A few multi-story parking garages exist in the business district, but they do little to ease the parking problem. Kirkwright, TVJ News.